We do not live inside of a black hole, but that does not rule out the possibility that our universe was born from one. Black holes are as famous as they are frightening, regions of infinite gravitational pull, where escape is impossible. Making a black hole is relatively straightforward. You just need to compress enough mass down below a certain threshold in size. Once you cross that threshold, gravity takes over and overwhelms all the other forces, creating a black hole. The threshold depends on the amount of mass you're trying to cram together. For a typical human being, that threshold is around the size of an atomic nucleus. For planet Earth, if you were to cram all of it into the volume of a chickpea, you would have a chickpea-sized black hole. For a typical star, weighing several times the mass of the Sun, the resulting black hole is a few miles across, the size of an average city. Oddly, if you were to take all the matter contents of the universe and cram them together, trying to make the biggest black hole possible, you would end up with a black hole roughly the size of the universe. Here's something else unexpected. The universe shares two other features in common with black holes. Perhaps the most recognizable part of a black hole is its surface, known as the event horizon. This is the region around the black hole that represents the ultimate point of no return. Within the event horizon, gravity is so strong that in order to escape, you must travel faster than the speed of light. Since you can't travel faster than the speed of light, you're stuck, literally. Our universe has an event horizon too, but this one, known as the cosmological event horizon, is far, far away, and it's caused by the expansion of the universe. Every day, our universe is getting bigger and bigger, and this expansion means that more distant galaxies recede away from us faster than the closer ones. Galaxies twice as far away appear to recede twice as quickly. Galaxies ten times farther away appear to recede ten times faster, and so on. At a certain distance, roughly 14 billion light years away, galaxies appear to be moving away from us faster than the speed of light. This is not a violation of the speed of light limit, because it's actually space itself that's expanding, rather than the galaxies moving. But it still leads to an event horizon. We will never be able to travel to galaxies farther away than 14 billion light years, even if we had all the time in the world. The space between us is expanding so much that we could never catch up. Those galaxies are forever locked away from us, as inaccessible as the outside universe is to someone who fell into a black hole. The second feature common between both black holes and the universe is the presence of a singularity. A singularity is a point of infinite density where gravity has completely collapsed every bit of matter into an infinitely tiny point. To be perfectly clear, we're not exactly sure what a singularity is, because understanding singularities requires a quantum description of gravity. In other words, a theory of gravity that works at extremely tiny scales. And we have not yet developed such a description. Black holes have a singularity in their centers. It's where all the stuff that made the black holes goes. And if you fall into a black hole below its event horizon, that's where you'll end up too. Due to the strange nature of gravity and geometry within a black hole, once you cross the event horizon, you are guaranteed to reach the singularity in a finite amount of time no matter how hard you fight it. Our universe has a singularity too. We call it the Big Bang. Around 13 billion years ago, all the matter of our universe was compressed 
into an infinitely tiny point. From there, it expanded, and the rest is, well, history, with the development of particles, and atoms, and stars, and galaxies, and planets, and people. But that probably doesn't mean much. So, while our universe has both a singularity and an event horizon, unfortunately, it doesn't quite match the description of a black hole. The problem is the nature of the singularities. For a black hole, the singularity sits in a precise position in space. If there is a black hole nearby, I can point to where the singularity sits. And if I fall inside the event horizon, I can go to that place and die horribly. But that's another story. In contrast, the singularity of the Big Bang does not exist in a specific location in space, but in a specific location in time. The Big Bang singularity also known as the cosmological singularity, is not sitting somewhere in the universe that we can point to. We can never reach it. We can never travel there. It only exists in the past of every single entity in the universe. This may seem like a minor quibble, but in the mathematics of gravity, it's a huge deal. The Big Bang singularity and black hole singularities are fundamentally dissimilar objects that behave in radically different ways. This difference means that there is no way that we can be living inside of a giant, universe-sized black hole, because the singularity of a black hole doesn't look anything like the Big Bang singularity. But our universe could still have a surprising link to black holes. The presence of the singularity at the Big Bang may represent something else. The truth is, we don't really understand what happens at the center of a black hole. We lack the sophistication in our theories of gravity to grapple with the true nature of the singularity. And some attempts to figure out what might be happening in the center of a black hole have led to some pretty wild theories. It's perfectly possible that black hole singularities are not the ends of the story, that they're not mere ultra-compressed lumps of matter. At incredibly tiny scales, physics can get truly weird and remarkably unfamiliar. The enormous strength of gravity coupled with the exotic workings of quantum mechanics can lead to massive instabilities in the structure of space-time itself. These massive instabilities might grow, leading to the formation of branched-off bubbles that are completely isolated from the universe hosting the original black hole. These bubbles would have their own Big Bangs, their own expansions, their own everything, totally separate from anything else. They would be their own universes, split off from the parent universe that spawned them. This is a pretty wild idea, that our universe could have been formed from the quantum chaos within another universe's black hole. It's also exceedingly hypothetical. It's an interesting idea, rooted in some very shaky and uncertain physics. Still, we don't know enough about the nature of singularities to completely rule them out. So in the meantime, they're definitely fun to think about. Thanks for watching.